Hey everyone, Rayo here, and today I'm bringing you a build guide for the Alacrigade. Alacrigade can be played in a few different ways, but today we'll be focusing on two. The Hybrid Alacrigade, which focuses on boons and damage, and the Ventari Alacrigade, which focuses on boons and heals. In this guide, we'll be given a rough breakdown of both of these variants, an explanation of key traits, as well as your CC rotation and your encounter rotations. If you'd like to skip ahead to any specific portion of this video, you can find the timestamps in the video description. Let's get started. The Renegade trait line will give you three new F abilities, as well as a new class boon called Kala's Fervor. Kala's Fervor grants 30 ferocity and 2% condition damage per stack. Your F2 Heroic Command grants 1 might per Kala's Fervor. Your F3 ability Citadel Bombardment sends out 10 projectiles, dealing damage and applying burning, hitting up to 3 enemies per missile. And your F4 ability Orders from Above grants pulsing alacrity around your character and lasts for 4 seconds. Each of the following builds revolve around the use of Heroic Command, Orders from Above, and your ability to maintain your energy. Your main purpose is to provide your party with Might and Alacrity. Prioritize those first and fill the spaces with your rotations. As with the F abilities, the following traits are shared between both builds. Righteous Rebel increases the duration of Alacrity you distribute, increasing boon application to 10 party members instead of 5 while also giving you condition damage intake reduction. All for One gives you protection to allies near any spirits that you summon. Charged Mists gives you 25 bonus energy on Legend Swap if you swap Legends when your energy is below 10. And an optional trait is Lasting Legacy. This increases might gain from Kala's Fervor from 2 up to 3. This should only be used over Righteous Rebel when your party is low on might uptime. Let's start off with the DPS Hybrid variant. For this build, you'll want to run full Diviners, Weapons, Armor, and Trinkets for DPS and Boon Duration, while using Scholar Runes in your armor for a flat DPS increase. Your weapon set will be Dual Swords with a Staff Swap, using Superior Sigil of Impact for increased DPS and boosted DPS once a boss's bar is broken, and Superior Sigil of Concentration for the flat out 10% Boon Duration buff. Your trait lines will be Devastation, Invocation, and the Renegade Elite Specialization. There are lots of traits that affect this build, but the main trait that you'll need here is Assassin's Presence. This will give your party bonus ferocity when you're in combat and they're within 600 units of you. While most of these traits happen passively, Charged Mist is the one that heavily affects your rotation. Although, if you don't struggle with energy management, then you should take Song of the Mists for a minimal DPS increase. For this build, you're expected to push out Alacrity and Might while maintaining decent DPS as well as providing Assassin's Presence for the ferocity boost to your party and CCing your target when the break bar is active. Camp Sword Sword as much as possible as that's where the majority of your DPS comes from. Staff is mainly for CC using Surge of the Mists, your Staff 5. Your basic rotation for each stance is as follows. In Kala Stance, use Ice Razor's Ire, Soul Cleave Summit, and then fill the space with Sword Autos and Sword 2. Soul Cleave Summit boosts your party's DPS by a hefty amount by letting each of their hits leech health with no cooldown i.e. the more frequent they hit, the more the leeching proc happens. So you want to keep your energy as high as possible, especially during fresh break phases, which gives the exposed buff which lasts for 5 seconds after a break bar is broken, and it gives a 50% damage increase. In Assassin Stance, while using Impossible Odds, use Shackling Wave, Sword 4, and Citadel Bombardment F3 for your burst, after which just camp Sword Autos and Sword 2s with Impossible Odds up. Keep in mind that between both legends, your priority is pushing out Alacrity and Might. These two skills should be used off of cooldown while filling the time spent between legend swaps with the aforementioned rotations. If you're running low on energy after using those abilities, cut out high energy cost abilities and just keep up sword autos, as that's where the majority of your DPS lies anyway. Here's a couple tips for this build. If you use Heroic Command and Orders from Above in Kala Stance, omit the use of Ice Razor's Ire and just use Soul Cleave Summit. The DPS boost to your party due to this elite far outscales what you could do with Ice Razor's Ire. Should your party need more stability, swap out Assassin Stance for Dwarven Stance and make use of Inspiring Reinforcement. Preventing your party from being CC'd makes up for the DPS loss of not being able to use Impossible Odds. And lastly, should your party need Boon Strip, swap out Assassin Stance for Demon Stance and make use of Banish Enchantment. This should be used in encounters where the target has protection and your party has no other source of Boon Strip. Now let's move on to the healing variant. For Ventari Renegade, you will want to use full Harriers, Armor, Weapons, and Trinkets with Rune of the Monk for the 15% Boon Duration as well as massive outgoing healing bonuses. 
For your weapons, you will be using dual swords with a staff swap, with both weapon sets using concentration sigil for the 10% boon duration, as well as sigil of transference for a flat 10% healing bonus to allies. For this build, you will be making use of the salvation trait line while taking the following traits. Tranquil balance, healing to allies is increased by 20% if you are above 75% health. Invoking harmony, which increases your healing by 20% for 10 seconds after swapping legends. And generous abundance, spawn a healing orb around yourself whenever using a legend skill. But while you're attuned to Ventari, this grants triple orbs around the tablet for every centaur skill used. With this build, you have a couple options for your trait lines. Option A, you can swap out Invocation for the Salvation trait line, giving you massive healing while keeping up personal and party DPS due to keeping the Devastation trait line, although this comes at the cost of the Charged Mist trait. Or option B, you can swap out Devastation for the Salvation trait line, making energy management easier to upkeep Alacrity and Might at the cost of losing some personal DPS as well as Assassin's Presence for a party-wide ferocity buff. Ideally, you will want to take option A. Since you're not expected to DPS, you don't have a need to use up a lot of energy through sword skills. If you're new to this class, option B allows you an easier learning curve since you can keep charged mists, which makes energy management a little easier. For this build, you're expected to push out Alacrity, Might, CC, and keep the group alive. On paper, it's easier to upkeep Alacrity with this build as you give out Alacrity not only with F4, but you also give it out with your main tablet healing skill, Natural Harmony, while using the Salvation trait line. Although you're healing, you have full Harriers in which you have power as your primary stat, meaning you can contribute a small bit of DPS. As with the DPS variant, camp Sword Sword as much as possible, as well as Kala Stance, but as DPS is not your primary role, you are expected to CC when the break bar is active, as you have an immense amount of CC at the cost of almost nothing. As you are healing, your rotation isn't clockwork and is instead situational. Here's what each of your skills do. The active heal skill of the tablet, Ventari's Will, is very strong for its energy cost and low cooldown. Top up your party's HP by moving the tablet around on them. It heals allies that it passes through or lands on top of. Natural Harmony is your burst heal, which can also top up Alacrity when F4 is on cooldown, as it provides 4 seconds per use, assuming you're using full Harriers. Protective Solace is a long duration projectile destruction skill. The dome around the tablet absorbs all projectiles and it lasts until your energy runs out. It's movable and it has a very low cooldown. Purifying Essence is great for Kandi heavy fights. It heals per Kandi cleansed up to 3 Kandis per player per activation. This is a very strong heal when used to cleanse 3 Kandis, and in heavy Kandi pressure fights, it's ideal. Your elite skill, Energy Expulsion, is a very steady CC, heal, and Kandi cleanse. Detonating this will spawn 5 healing orbs and consume all of your remaining energy, but costs a base of 10 energy to cast. For every 10 energy spent, it will cleanse 1 Kandi, i.e. 10 energy is 1 Kandi, 20 energy is 2 Kandis, etc. Here's a few tips for this build. Keep your tablet near allies as it pulses heals similar to regeneration, but since it's not regeneration itself, that means it will stack with regeneration. When healing, Natural Harmony has a 1 second interval from the time that you activate it until the time that it heals. If you're in a scenario where you need to heal someone the second the tablet lands on them, activate the heal first and then move the tablet onto them. This will result in that party member getting heals from Natural Harmony as well as Ventari's Will skill the second it lands on them, making this a very potent burst heal. If you need to move the tablet a far distance, activate Natural Harmony when it's about halfway to your target. Timing is key, so give this some practice. The healing from this class is immense when used effectively. For fights where projectile destruction is important, Protective Solace is one of your best options for it. The uptime is based on your energy, and when used with a high energy pool, it can last longer than any other reflection skill in the game. And lastly, when your party is low on CC after you use Staff 5 and Dark Razor's Daring, you can swap to Ventari to spam explode your tablet. It will cost 5 energy to respawn the tablet and another 10 energy to explode it. The energy refresh is almost in line with the low cooldowns that these skills have already. Doing this will also spawn healing orbs for your party to run onto for more healing. The Revenant class in general has incredible low cooldown crowd control skills. Your biggest CC is Staff 5, and when stacked with Dark Razor's Daring and Kala Stance, you can break most medium to large break bars. A list of your hard CCs are Surge of the Mists, Staff 5, Dark Razor's Daring and Kala Stance, Energy Expulsion and Ventari Stance, and Jade Winds in the Assassin Stance. Your soft CCs are Blindness on Staff 3, Weakness on Staff 2, 
Chilled on Sword 2, Immobilize on Sword 4, and Cripple in Calistance on Ice Razor's Ire. Since you have Surge of the Mists on Staff 5, you typically don't need to do much other than that in most cases, but your basic CC rotation in Renegade is Dark Razor's Daring on the target plus Surge of the Mists. Should you ever need more than that, you can always follow up with Energy Expulsion in Ventari or Jade Winds in Assassin, though it's typically not recommended as it depletes your energy completely, so only resort to these when you're in a pinch. As for topping up your CC, don't underestimate Chilled CC damage. Chilled from Sword 2 is a very strong soft CC. That, stacked with other CCs such as Blindness and Weakness and Immobilize, is incredibly strong. And let's finish this off with a couple tips between both builds. Staff 4 will heal and cleanse two Condis from everyone in your party. Staff 3 is a 2 second long mobile block. This is very strong when dealing with stacked mechanics and harder endgame content. Staff 2 is a very low cooldown delayed area heal, which can be used to help top up your party's health. And lastly, Sword 5 is a decent gap closer as well as a pretty strong sword skill with a relatively high energy cost. You can either use this to close the gap between you and your target, or if you have energy to spare, you can use this to help your DPS burst when running the DPS hybrid variant of this build. And that's all I have for you today. To sum everything up, Alacrigate is a very strong option when it comes to DPS and Alacrity hybriding, or heal and Alacrity hybriding. This is the ideal build to use in your group when having another person playing Quick Brand, as both of you can upkeep some DPS while providing necessary boons and party buffs to increase the party's damage as well. All in all, I hope you guys enjoyed this guide and I hope that this could give you a little more insight on the expectations of an Alacrigade as well as make it a little easier to understand. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to show that with a thumbs up and if I missed anything, mention so in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching. Once again, I'm Rayo and I'll see you guys in my next video.